This episode is sponsored by Microfocus and the LoadRunner Solutions family. That includes LoadRunner Professional, Enterprise, Cloud, and Developer. You know, performance matters. Did you know that LoadRunner Solutions have the largest community of practitioners in the world? Join that community at community.microfocus.com, scan the QR code, and check out the LoadRunner family page on performance engineering, as well as their YouTube playlist that we've got links for in the show notes on smcjournal.com as well as YouTube. This episode is sponsored by Performance Lab. They're a provider of premier load and performance testing services for enterprises in all industries. They focus on a robust methodology, tools, and the experienced engineers that know what they're doing. Since 2008, they have built a reputation for reliability worldwide. BoomQ is their own innovative performance testing platform. However, they also consult around many industry standard load testing tools like JMeter, LoadRunner, and others. Find out more at performancelabus.com. This episode is sponsored by Supervisor. Stop losing money with a slow website. With Supervisor, you can continuously track the performance of your code and your hosting. Predict site page load speed with high user volumes and an easy one-click load test solution. Find out more at supervisor.com. Welcome to a special episode of the SMC Journal podcast. I have with me a guest whom I've never, ever met before. That is not true. It's James Pulley, my really good friend. James, how are you today? I'm doing great, Scott. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being in studio with us today. I know. This is, this is kind of... This is up a, up a level. Yeah, we're, we're bringing it up a little bit. Yeah. So today I want to talk about a subject that is near and dear to James's heart. It's the AppDex score. And the question is really, how useful is AppDex? Some people love it and some people not so much. We're going to find out what James thinks today. So James, yes. Well, what the heck is AppDex and why do we care? Uh, AppDex is a measurement of how satisfied your users are with your website. Okay. And uh, I've got an interesting story about how I first encountered AppDex. Okay. I was at a, an e-com top 50 customer, and we get into some meetings on test results, and people that are doing back-end monitoring as a complement to our test results are reporting this AppDex score. I was like, well, what is AppDex? I said, well, it tells how satisfied our users are. So, okay, well, how satisfied are they? I said, well, if it gets to be closer to one, they're happier. Okay, so t tell me more, tell me more. And AppDex has a couple of components to it. And it's easier to describe them if you take a look at, say, an acceptable response time. Okay. So, Scott, give me an acceptable response time. Five seconds. Five seconds. Okay, so if I'm below five seconds, I'm satisfied. I'm happy. That makes sense. Google Rail, DOM complete, five seconds, you know, everybody's happy. But then you get into this thing called frustrating. And frustrating is four times satisfied. Or, or that's tolerating. It's one of them. It's tolerating. It's, I guess it's tolerating, not frustrating. So tolerating is four times satisfied. That's up to 20 seconds. Right. That's a really long time. I'm certainly not gonna wait that long. Yeah, and then frustrated is over 20 seconds. And so, I, uh, the more I looked into AppDex and I saw how it was being used across multiple tools, it's kind of a, a cross-industry consortium of people that have adopted it. And it's like, does this really match user behavior, uh, observable behavior? And you can go to Google and you can look at Google and Google will say after about two seconds, you have people start abandoning the site. And, and it would seem to me that's a high measure of frustration mm -hmm. right there. It's like, okay, how does that map to AppDex? It really doesn't. And uh, the longer your response time, acceptable response time gets, your satisfied gets, the longer tolerating and the longer out frustrating. You get to an eight second acceptable response time for an internal app, if it gets to 32 seconds, you're going to get a lot of phone calls at your help desk. I'm sure. Long before you hit the end, that end marker and before people abandon. So is there a better measure? And uh, a couple years after that, I, I found that there were really two 
measurements as part of the nav timing metrics that really tell a better story of this concept of satisfaction versus frustration. Mm -hmm. And they are DOM interactive and first user event. Where DOM and or where interacted where interactivity is after the first user event, okay. I try to make want to make use of the interface and I can't. I have a technical measurement of frustration. I'm definitely not satisfied in that case. But if it happens after interactivity, I go to click on the interface and it's responsive, then I'm actually satisfied. I, I'm continuing naturally through the site. And you look at what Google Rail has done, they've dropped some of their, their recommendations for DOM Interactive down into the 50 millisecond range, mm. you know, the near instantaneous. Uh, or imperceptible range in order to capture what's going on here with, with end user satisfaction. Well, I found out a little while later after coming to this conclusion that the same measurements were being used back at that same e-com uh, top 50 customer and they were looking at that and saying from an end user behavior perspective where we have two incidents of frustration, that is this first user event, they tried to use the interface, before it's, before it's available for use. If they have two incidents in a row, pretty much someone's gonna abandon the site mm. right there. Mm. Even if their, their expectations are two seconds or one second, it's that very personalized behavior. And I don't think there's a good industry score that measures that today. Um, Aptex certainly to me doesn't capture it very well because of this very long period of tolerating that comes after uh, satisfaction. I, I just, maybe it could be tuned, uh, but I just don't see it. The other way I've seen Aptex being used that is a little disconcerting is it's being used out of the box, untuned. You get Aptex and you're using a tool and it starts reporting it. So, well, okay, well, what are the values set at? Oh, we just took the defaults. And that may or may not represent what's actually going on. That could actually be dangerous. <laughs> that, that could be. You could get a false sense of user satisfaction in that case. Uh, let's go back to the mainframe days for just a moment. All right. 1968, Robert Miller is an employee of IBM, presents at a conference. I think he presents a paper about the, the frustration level on the mainframe screens. And he talks about a time scale of 0.1 second one second and 10 seconds. 0.1 seconds meaning at that, at that time frame, the user seems to get instantaneous results back to the screen. They don't really cognitively see a change in screens. It's just, it's so fast. One second is where people begin to perceive that there's a change in screen. So they see a tiny bit of delay, but it's not enough for them to stop using the application. They just notice it. But somewhere between one second and 10 seconds, Depending on who you are, people begin to get frustrated and they begin to abandon. They'll sip a cup of coffee or they start talking on the phone while I'm waiting on the screen. It, and and the, the user frustration level gets pretty high and then at 10 seconds you start seeing massive abandonment. So from that paper, it, it kind of went forward into client server and then in the dot com days, we ended up with the eight second rule. And that was this balance that was supposedly struck between the period where everybody loves it at one second and everybody hates it at 10 seconds. Eight seconds was the threshold where we thought for web pages, we could at least, that's like the most you could go before you started losing serious money and you started losing the efficiency. So anything eight seconds or below, you were fine. So can we relate that scale today to AppDex or have things changed so much that we can't even use that scale either. I think things have changed. It's become more compressed. And there have been a number of drivers on this. One is the speed to the home interface has changed. Mm -hmm. uh, you were looking at simple web pages delivered across AOL. Eight seconds was, was probably reasonable because it took that much to deliver mm -hmm. the actual full page experience. But what we see now is that the expectation has been driven by Google and Facebook and other social media accounts that have near instantaneous response. Now, 
in many cases, they have to buy whole data centers relocated around the globe in order to get this. Mm -hmm. But they have set the standard for what people expect. Why can't you be as fast as Google? It's a really simple page Right. in, in a case like that. And Google recognizes that themselves. They reserve their highest score for organizations which are two seconds or less mm -hmm. for page rank. Mm -hmm. So they recognize this user behavior too. Um, will the expectations ever go back? Uh, it's very difficult to see that they will. Um, I, I would like to see some way to incorporate this relationship between first user event and a DOM interactive nature into some other type of scoring model where you can look at the difference between. But this also dictates that you have to have tools that operate with full browsers Right. when you do that. And you look at a tool like um, a LoadRunner or a JMeter or, or some other tools that are operating maybe even at a protocol basis, and some of these tools report app deck scores. Well, how can you do that if I've got a thick JavaScript client understand what the actual end user response time is. Um, or if I'm not loading all the page assets, I'm just doing the top level dynamic URLs. But yet you have a score there. And it, getting back to your issue of, does it unreasonably set expectations on the part of the end users? I think it does. Now, I, I think there is a solution on the market that could very, very easily dashboard this and report it out very well. You look at the latest RUM interface in Splunk and how it's pulling in all of these metrics. It's agent. I believe it gets first user event. It certainly gets all the nav timing metrics. Um, there's certainly a capability there, and Splunk is large enough. It could drive an industry standard to say, we want to shift how you look at satisfaction and how you look at frustration down to the individual page level and, and do that in production, and do that in, in functional testing and in unit testing where possible to get a measurement long before you run two users in anger together for performance test mm -hmm. to see if your page is even capable of, of providing a, a really good level of satisfaction. So is there a good case for Aptex? If somebody is using Aptex currently, uh, maybe do they just need to properly tune it? Maybe that's better, or is, do you say, there's, there's got to be a better way. I think there's got to be a better way, and, and it boils down to this difference between satisfaction and frustration, this 4x window. Okay. And no matter how short you get it, even if you say satisfaction is one second and frustrated is four seconds, then you're, you're still going to have a mass of people abandoned after two seconds. So is it a really accurate measure? It, it may well have been at the time that it was developed because Aptex is it's kind of an aging index at this point. You mm -hmm. know, it's, I, I'd have to go to the Wikipedia to see exactly when it was developed, but I know it goes back at least a decade and, and probably before that. Um, so maybe we need some new metrics to go. If you're an Aptex fan, we'd love to hear your feedback and it's pretty easy to reach us. You'll see the information on your screen shortly. but. Tell us why you maybe disagree, or if you do agree, give us your comments in the YouTube video or other places. And James, I'm sure that we're going to get some comments, and we'll just we'll have to answer them as they come in. But uh, any other things that you want to mention about Aptex or or what you're doing? Um, what I'm doing in, in my role as Chief Performance Officer at QA Consultants is to take these types of metrics and bring them to organizations to help them answer these questions related to user frustration, user delight, how to capture that early, and, and in fact, where we can capture it early enough that we can avoid the accumulation of technical debt for performance. I mean, let's face it, performance testing usually occur occurs fairly late in the process, and there's a lot of stuff you have to unwind in order to get major performance improvements. Right. You can begin asking these questions, particularly on the area of frustration um, with, with nav timing metrics, quite early as soon as the user interface is available. Uh, you can ask other questions in the unit testing phase and get large data sets where you can look at the performance of, of REST or SOAP interfaces and things of that nature 
functionally and just make sure they scale there. Right. And um, th I, I think that's the key to massive shifts within our industry is begin asking the questions earlier and consistently and to be able to find those defects earlier because asking at the end of the cycle, um, if you see what's going on in production around the world today, doesn't seem to be bringing us a large amount of improvement. Interesting. So there you have it. Thank you for being on the show today, James. Appreciate it. And we'll see you again, I'm sure, on the yep. SMC Journal podcast. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you.